guys, welcome back to another video. We're back with Bible Study Saturdays with Brother Gio and Brother Jave. Last week we did the um, first half of John chapter 4. We went through all the way to verses 20. And we're going to finish from verses 20 all the way to 54. So we're we going we gonna to finish the whole the whole rest of it. To start off, we're going to start off with a prayer by Brother Gio. And then we're going to do an ending prayer by Brother Jave. Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, we come before you. Sitting at your mercy seat. Seeking to bask in your presence. As we take up your word, Lord God looking to learn more about you, Father, so we can look more like you, act more like you, talk and walk more like you. That we can surrender our will unto yours, Lord God, with great understanding that you are in control of all things. So Father, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would give us revelation that would cause transformation. Yes, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you would impermeate our hearts, Lord God, but that would cause a change and bring forth fruit that is pleasing to your eyes, Lord. Yes, Father. I pray that everything that you would reveal unto us, Lord God, would be the meditation of our thoughts and that we would seek out to actually apply what you have taught us. And furthermore, Lord God, share it with someone else. Yes, God. So have your way in this hour. Let it be as it is in heaven, Lord God, here on earth. May this be glorifying to you, Lord as you edify your sons. In the mighty name of Jesus, do we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 So we, we were around what, 15? 20. We went to 20? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So quick recap, right? You have Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman. Yeah. We, we identify that this was strategic, strategically done by Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Him sitting back while the rest of his uh, followers went into town to find some stuff, some, some nourishment to eat. And he runs into the Samaritan woman. And he's telling her, like, yo, listen, can you give me something to drink? She was like, why are you asking me just for something to drink? Um, because Jews and Samaritans historically don't, don't mesh with each other, with each other. And he's like, if you knew who I was, then you would be the one asking me for a drink. And he goes on to tell her that the water that I'm telling you that I can provide for you will enable you to never thirst again. And Jave pointed out something really important that she was just stuck on the fact that I no longer have to come to this well twice a day in the heat, drop my bucket, almost 100 feet, maybe even more, have to pull it up. Have, I won't have to do this work anymore. She fixed up, fixated on the physical. But what Jesus is talking about is a spiritual change, a transformation, one that she can't even process at the moment. And, and we, I think we, we tie that to how when sometimes pe preachers are preaching or pastors are talking and the message goes right over someone's head and they don't understand it. Um, this is sort of kind of like what's happening with her. But the great thing about Jesus is that he goes on to break it down for her. And, you know, we, we pray that our pastors and even the viewers of this uh, channel that you're putting together would be able to understand exactly what Jesus is saying so that they can apply it to their lives. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So verse 20. Um, we we'll go to 19. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye worship, ye know not what. Pretty much he's saying you do not know what you worship, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour cometh and now is 
when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So now Jesus is just like, again, speaking in these fancy terms. And I'm pretty sure she's like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> the hour, bro, I just came to get some water for my peoples. Hey, you talking about the hour is now and hours to come. Mm -hmm. Jay, what would you got for this one? So we, it, so what just happened in that couple of verses is um, if you go back to 16, um, the woman, or 15, she says, uh, sir, give me the water. But Jesus says to her, go get her husband. Um, so how, how did worship enter this conversation? Okay, so she, talks in the, she, she brought up the location of worship because obviously when Jesus said, go get her husband, she's, change, she's trying to change the subject. Okay, so she starts talking about the location of worship. That has nothing to do with what Jesus um, was, was, was trying to expose. He was trying to expose her sin. Now she uses this talk, talk about the location of worship to try and distract him <laughs> from what he was really trying to do. And the funny thing is he addresses it. But then we read the, if we read the other, the, the coming verses, he's going to go right back to what he meant to address. Um, so worship. Um, Ezra, what's worship to you? Um, praising God in different form. Okay. What else? Uh, I say acknowledging God and just like really being appreciative of like just him and just really want to honor him and just put him up in that high pedestal. All right. So when it says they that worship him must worship him in, in spirit and in truth, what do you think that's saying? Um, you got to worship God with everything. Because with God, you just can't give peace and peace of yourself. Like you got to give your all. Agree. Agree. So oftentimes, I'm not sure if you've heard it, but they would say that um, worship is your lifestyle, right? Um, worship begins at who you are and, and how you live. It, it's not so much the lifting of your hands or the clapping or the, the extolling or the praising of God, but it really starts at how you live as a person. So the act of worship, it's acknowledging God for who he is, right? Not what he do, but who he is, right? And so if you're going to acknowledge him for who he is, I, I think the question just came to mind to me is, first you must think about who you are. Right. Um, because if, if worship is about lifestyle and who you are and how you live, then you must first examine that if you're going to truly worship him in spirit and in truth. And so Jesus said to her, the time is coming where the location of worship does not matter. Hmm. Right. You don't have to be at uh, Malta Street to worship and look at the time we're in right now. This virus, we're not at church in the physical building. So Jesus is saying, the location doesn't matter. You don't have to be in Jerusalem, right? But they that worship me must worship in spirit and in truth. So Jesus being a spirit, he's everywhere at any time. He's uh, omnipresent, meaning he's every single place at any given time, right? So when you worship God, um, you're connecting your spirit with his spirit. And this can happen anywhere right here where you are you could be worshiping god right but your your biggest act of worship is how you live right y your life should be an act of worship right so it's far beyond just lifting your hands and praising god but it's how you live how you interact with others how you speak to others right how you treat others right? what you say what you do so on and so forth. So that's my take real quick. That's, that's really key. I don't want us to just kind of glaze over what Jay just said. Um, that worship is a lifestyle. Um, bro, every decision you make, even the ones you think about and don't make, that's all a part of worshiping. Yeah. Yeah. 
like crazy thoughts will come in your head and, and it's your job to cast those thoughts down and get them out of the, out of your head and, and 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 not by your own strength or your own might but by replacing those thoughts with the word of god right um just 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 really i want you to really when you when you post this video if you can if you just put some emphasis on worshiping right and, and that it means it's your lifestyle people use the word christianity so loosely but the early christians when you know if and when we get to the book of acts you'll see that their lifestyle showed that they were christians they all came in they all chipped in whatever they needed every like everybody brought every, all that they had shared it it was like a brotherhood like it was a relationship one bond one relationship one mind one accord no one lacked no one was in uh, surplus. Anything you needed it was right there. And I think that is truly the example of how God intended for us to live on earth. Yeah. And that and that is that's worship at its best. Okay? Yeah. So um Jesus is real savvy. So okay, sis, you wanna go that route? You wanna talk about your fathers and worship then? Okay, I'll talk to you about worshiping. I'll tell you what worshiping is, all right? Mm -hmm. And then you'll see, like, he's going to switch it back. So we'll go to um, verse 25. It says, the woman says unto him, I know that the Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. This is the reason why the Jews don't believe in Christ. They don't believe in Jesus. They think that he didn't come yet. Um, this is their belief, right? Verse 26 is, Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Yo, I promise you. I promise you. If Jesus was to walk up to people right now and be like, yo, I am Jesus Christ. Like, just pay attention to me. I'm trying to save your life. That's what he's doing to this lady right now. Yeah, yeah. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? Remember, there's that Jew and Samaritan disconnect. They don't, they don't link with each other. But Jesus knew their thoughts, right? But n nobody said anything. So verse 28, 28, the woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said, unto the men come see a man which told me all things that ever i did is not this the christ then they went out of the city and came unto him in the meanwhile his disciples prayed him saying master eat but he said unto them i have meat to eat that ye know not of i don't want to transition to that yet just yet but you, you see what happened just now to the lady? <clears throat> it finally clicked. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this is an example of what I was talking about, how when preachers preach and they're saying things and it, and, and it goes right over your head, I think Jesus just flat out explained to her like what he was trying to say in verse 26. Sis, I'm Christ. Oh, straight. I'm Christ. This is, I'm, I'm thinking all the fluff and the parables. I'm trying to speak to you about everything that's to come. Right here, right now, I am Christ. And I want you. Yeah. I want you. Yeah. And immediately there's a shift. She forgets why she even came. She drops the water pot and she rushes back into town. Come, come see a man that told me everything. Yeah. I'm excited to share the love of God that she just encountered. Mm -hmm. Some some of us pre this is my my last point. You can go ahead, Jay. Um, some of us present day new believers, we uh we have the same encounter with Christ in, in church on Sunday. But when we get to school, or when we get to work, when we get back home with our families, do we share this, or we just keep it a secret, and, or keep it amongst the people who saw it in church? Yeah. No, I've done that. We're all guilty of it. We're all guilty. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or we receive a word or we just keep it to ourselves. We don't share. Yeah. And just as you were speaking, I was thinking that's how we ought to be with the gospel, though. We ought to run with it just like her and take it. I mean, that's exactly what he told us to do, the Great Commission, right? Take the gospel to every nation, to all parts. Um, I mean, that's how we, we, we ought to be. Just like the woman we have an encounter with, God, we run and tell everyone else. Tell the village, tell our school, tell our friends. Um, tell our families um, that's how we, we, we have to be and that's that's what Jesus calls us to do to spread the gospel right? if you have an encounter with him don't keep it to yourself someone is very much in need of him and just like this woman that did not know that she was thirsty <laughs> right? someone else your friend E your cousin whoever they know, probably don't even know they need Jesus right? but you never know what you plant in that seed or sow in that seed what will come from that? I can't. I can't wait, bro. To see you sitting back and looking at your numbers grow on social media without having to display cartoons, without having to exploit yourself and do sexual favors and all types of craziness. Like you just, you just flat out putting the word out there. <clears throat> And just and then watch your numbers grow, bro. And it's just like because people you're impacting people, right. you're doing what this lady did. So you know, stay you know, stay the course. You know, the first couple of years might be rocky, but trust and believe. You know what I mean? God, God will start bringing people your way. So and stay connected to your brotherhood. Yeah. No, I keep I keep that mindset with me every single day. I'll be like, I'll be like, it's like because I'm 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 going. I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to be so amazed about how much success is coming that I wouldn't even think about any, well, not like that, but you, you get what I'm trying to say. So I've been, I've been doing this for like the last four years since like sixth grade. And obviously I'm at where I'm at now, but I'm still going to keep on pushing because I got patience and I know that it's not, it's, it's going to take time. So it'll take time to like, to like really get to a point where you want it to be. So now, now we transition that right. The disciples come back, and um, they're a little taken back by what Jesus is doing. Something out of the norm, right? And then, so they come back with the food now, and like, all right, cool. We're not going to address what he was just doing. Whatever, that's Jesus. He's doing his thing. We'll, we'll probably talk about that later on, but yo, here, Jesus, we finally got some food. We're tired here. Boom, get something to eat. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is still in the spirit. Jesus is still focused on the task at hand. Jay, almost like when they're ready to rush us out of the spirit when we having like a breakthrough, man. All right, let's go to the announcements. Or like, <laughs> it's like, like slow down. I want to be in this moment as long as I can. Right, yeah. Um. And so verse 32, he says, but he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, hath any man brought him up something to eat? And Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye that are yet four months and then cometh the harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And the herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. Any idea what he's saying? Not even that nah, went over my head. <laughs> I don't know why Jesus got to be talking like this. Facts, bro. <laughs> I don't understand. And you know what's crazy? Because he, he's probably he's probably talking. Nah, I'm lying. I was gonna say he's probably talking regular, but it's just because it's in King James version. We don't speak this way anymore. It's different. But no, nah, because they didn't even understand some of the stuff that he was saying. Wow. Yeah, what do you mean? And then he was talking to them in a parable. But I, I guess 
I guess you got to talk like this for whatever reason, right? Um, when I first saw this message, I was just like, I have no idea what he's talking about. I'm thinking he's talking about like, like the physical harvest, right? Because he's like, yeah, the farm. You want to pick the crops. It's now time to you know pick everything up from from when you seed you sow way back when, right? He says, verse thirty five. Don't you say there are yet four months? And then come at the harvest. So he's talking about like a physical farm when it's time to your crops. Mm-hmm. But he's like, behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white or ready to harvest. What so I'm gonna try to give you a clue, see if you could piece it together. The woman just went back in town said, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? So, and now the disciples, and he's telling the disciples to look up, look in the fields for the harvest is ready. What do you think he's talking about? Just take a guess. There's people, there's, so now there's people running towards Christ. After this woman went and said what she said. I'm trying to think. <laughs> it took me a minute to get this too high because I never, like somebody had to really help me break this down. Uh-huh. And um, so just real quick, he's saying, Jesus came to earth to do what? To die for our sins. Right, right. And to try to get as many people to believe in him so that they won't have to die, right? To accept him. Yeah. And so... Like Jay just said earlier, the Great Commission, go out and spread the word. The purpose of spreading the word is for, is for you to plant the seed and, and prayerfully that people would receive the word and be reconciled back to Christ. That they would receive what you said, believe in Christ, and start to follow him, right? Start to worship. Yeah. Jesus is saying that to his disciples, my brothers, listen, I know you're focused on food and the harvest and whatnot. But right now my focus is to do the will of God. Mm-hmm. And that's to come out here and spread the love, letting them know that I'm here for them. Okay. They ought to worship me and serve me. Look up, you see all these people. So there's a bunch of people coming from the Samaritan village towards Jesus. That's the field he's have told his disciples to look at. Why is he telling the disciples to look at the people that's coming towards him? He about to do something? Yeah, you better believe he is. <laughs> what did he just do to the woman? He did, he did what Jesus do. <laughs> yeah, he had an encounter with her, and now she's a believer. So she, I'm get, so she went and spread the word, and they come in. Oh, nah, this. Yeah, look, he, he just brought one seed in one person. And look, look how much it brought back. Right. You, you, you think if you plant, you plant that the objective is to plant one, one orange seed or one apple seed. And you think that from that, a whole tree of apple seeds are going to grow from one seed. He dropped one seed in the Samaritan woman and now the whole village. Right. Christ. And that's the harvest. You understand what a harvest is? Okay. All right. Okay, so I right. yeah, they're not talking about the physical harvest. Okay, I right. I get that. Harvest time just means that yo, listen. Let's say you planted some seeds back in, say March, April, when spring started to hit, right? Right. And then, um, you you know you make sure you do everything, all the stuff that people who plant crops do, and then come like June, July, like four months later, right. it's harvest time. Now it's time to pick up the crops. The crops are right, ready to go. So that's what he did. He planted his seed in this woman, shared the, his word, shared his love, had an encounter with her. And now because of that one seed he planted, boom, all these people now are coming. Yeah. yeah. And just like harvest time and the crops are ready, those people were ready. So in other words, the disciples didn't have to do much. They didn't have to preach down heaven. They didn't have to pray down heaven. It, 
<laughs> they didn't have to do this. She was already yelling. Yelling. <laughs> yelling. Your hearts were already permeated. It was just a matter of you ready to receive. They were ready. They believed. They wanted to. They they they, they wanted more. And and just going back up. Remember we said last time that that Jesus um, he speaks um, symbolically, figuratively. Right. So you have to pay attention to the word and and the text and. Um, not just the content, but the context within that content. That, that makes sense, yeah. right? Just, just really paying attention to to what what he is saying. Um, so when he speaks about um, the food, they ask him if he's hungry. You hit, you want food? He says, um, "I have a kind of food you know nothing about." Um, what Jesus is saying is that his his nourishment came from doing the Father's will. Um, at that time, he wasn't necessarily worried about uh, physical physical nourishment. Um, the nourishment he spoke, spoke about came from doing the Father's, um, the Father's will. Right? Um, and then further down. Bread alone, but by every word that proceeds mm -hmm. by the mouth of God. That's, that's what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and just, just a quick thing from my, my study Bible. It says, we are nourished not only by what we take in, but also by what we give out for God. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so spiritual nourishment comes from doing God's will and helping to bring his work of salvation to completion so I'm pretty sure when you see the 30 views in one day it motivates you to make more videos right yes. yeah yeah and so it is, you see one soul saved. Oh, it's an amazing thing. It's a celebration. You know, I was thinking earlier too, Jimmy, when we was going over verse 27 and into 30. Mm -hmm. like, do, do we really even celebrate someone coming to Christ anymore? Like, I, I remember it used to be the big thing, big thing. Like, everybody hug, everybody cheer, rejoice. Now it's like, you got to tell people. <laughs> you got you to tell them that another soul was added to the kingdom. You got to force them to praise God for them. Like, nah, we should be happy. Just like the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Rejoicing. Yeah, so too, we should be rejoicing for our brother or our sister that has answered the call, answered, um, accepted Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. We got to be happy for that one soul. Man, such a powerful passage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, um, let me just read this part real quick from my study Bible. Um, it says, sometimes Christians make excuses or excuse themselves from witnessing by saying that their family or friends aren't ready to believe. Um, Jesus, however, makes it clear that around us, a continual harvest waits to be reaped. Don't let Jesus find you making excuses, right? Look around, you will find people ready to hear God's word. That's so, uh, in our time, that's a prevalent thing. We, we look around, sometimes we feel like the minority in terms of being Christians and serving God because everyone is for the world. But we never know that same person listening to rap and hip hop and wilding out, be that same person the minute you share God's word with them, be that same person ready to receive, ready to receive. So let's not make excuses about sharing God's word, but just like the woman, come and see a man. That's big, Jay. Yeah. Sharing that word, brother. Mm -hmm. Daddy, daddy, that evangelical portion that we we stumbled upon for some reason. Yeah. Um, Jesus is not even asking us to save anybody. He's just asking us to share the word. He do the saving. And he said, "Yo, if 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 they don't, if they reject you, he said, dust the the, the dust the the, the the dirt off your sandals. Keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. So, yo, share the word." And let him do the saving. He'll bring forth the increase. Just sow the seed. And that's it. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm sharing the word.
We on thirty nine right now. Okay. Um, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which test which testified. He told me all that I ever did. Just her, her testimony, bro. Her encounter with Christ caused many people to believe. So the things that we go through in life, <laughs> you probably shouldn't hide them and hold them from other people because they that could be the reason why that could be like that thing like the door that that could open up the doorway for people to hear what yeah. god has to say to them yeah. yeah and it's it's your testimony is um pretty much saying to them if god can do that for you and i'm in that same situation you know what i'm saying he's able to do that for me as well so yeah. Let's them know that you're not alone. Someone else is going through this or has been through this, but God got them through it. The enemy has us to think that we're on we're an island of our own and what we're going through, nobody will understand or could help us get out of it. Yeah. But the word of God tells us to share, confess to one another so that we can help each other through and pray each other through. Okay. Verse 40 says, so when the Samaritans were come unto him, this is the harvest we were just talking about. Like, like all these people are coming out, like all these fruits are coming, right? All the vegetables are coming. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he, he abode there three days, AKA the Samaritans came and said, Jesus, can you stay with us? Please. We want to, we want to be in your presence. And he stayed with them for two days, it says. Verse 41, and many more believed because of his own words. So now they had their own encounter. It just started from a testimony, but now they had their own encounter with Christ. And now it's because of that, many more be believe. Some probably just came out just to see what the hype was about. Mm -hmm. Right? And now they're like, oh, snap. Now this is the real deal. They saw it with their own two eyes. That's so dope. That's why I be telling y'all to bring y'all friends out to Friday youth service, man. Because of y'all relationship with them alone would just cause them to come out. Um, because your testimony is powerful enough just to bring them out and then they might hear us say something or do something or witness something and that in turn might cause them to start believing in Christ. In verse 42 it says, and said unto the woman, now we believe, not because of your saying, for we have heard of him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the savior of the world. See, like some people didn't believe based on what she was saying, but they came because of who she was that she was a part of the town and her testimony was just enough. Right. Verse 43 says, now after two days, he departed from there and went into Galilee for Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. You understand what that says? What that means, verse 44? I said have no honor in its own country. Um, if you went in right now, that, that's what he's saying. These people are not going to listen to me because they grew up with me. They know me. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I was about to say that, like, his own people, like, wouldn't listen to him or, like, take him, like, serious. Uh so yeah, that's what Jesus is saying. Like they're not they're not gonna receive him, yeah. right? To right. so them, they just he's just the carpenter's son. Um, verse forty-five, and when he was coming to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. Which feast is this, is he talking about, Jay? You know? Nah, let me see. This has it. He just nah, nah. They just be having parties every week. Well, yeah. Remember, there's, there's a. I think there's like three. It's like the feast of weeks, the feast of unleavened bread, bread. um, Passover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, three things that they celebrate every so often. Yeah. Um, like things that happened back when Moses was in charge. They still carry those traditions. Um. That's probably what this was. 
So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and he besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, sir, come down ere my child die. Come down lest my child would die. And he said to him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. You understand what just happened? Yeah. So the, that noble man, he was here. He was here when um, Jesus was giving like his test testimony, little preach, and that kind of like you say, let's say, like, motivate him and, like, kind of, like, help him more to convince, like, that, like, Jesus is real and, like, his power is, and because, like, his son was, like, sick and he, like, now realizing the capability and how powerful Jesus is, he want Jesus to heal his son. Yeah. So, so the thing... Yeah, Jeff. Um, right here where we, we looking at the Jews and the Galileans. Um, the Galileans, um, even though they welcomed Jesus, their welcome was based on the miracles that he did or they heard about. Um, it wasn't necessarily true faith. And so in um, verse 48, where he says, um, will you never believe in me unless you see mir miraculous signs and wonders? Um, their belief was was or they believe just because they saw the miracles, the signs and the wonders. Now take that away. Do they still believe? I think not. Right. So he criticized them for that saying, it, it, do I, it, do I need to do a miracle just for you to believe? And, and that's what they were on. Um, we see, and then we believe, but this faith or our Christian walk is, is as the Bible says, is we walk by faith and not by sight. Right. So just understand that that contrast there between the Jews and the Galileans. They depended upon the miracles, the signs, and the wonders in order for them to believe. That's where their belief stemmed from. Ooh. So it's kind of like it's kind of like like when you when you and you come up, and then you got like them them few people that like believe that what you about to do is gonna be success. And then when you successful, all the people that was like, nah, he not gonna make it start coming in and be like, yo, you remember you remember back in the day when you do all of that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like they only yeah. believe because they see it now. Yeah. Like it's funny it's funny Jay just said that. He says we walk by faith and not by sight. And and these people only believe because of signs and miracles. But I think later on we'll see that wonders, signs and miracles follow they that believe. We'll see that scripture. We'll see Jesus say that. Yeah. They they got they got it reversed. They follow because of those signs and wonders. But Jesus is saying, should you have faith in me and follow me because of your faith, then those miracle signs and wonders will follow you. Yeah. Yeah. How I look at it, right? We have our five senses. Smell, touch, taste, see, hear, right? Mm -hmm. I like to call faith the sixth sense. Mm -hmm. Something we can't, it's not tangible. We can't grab it, can't taste it, can't touch it. So I always think about faith as my sixth sense. It's like, like, I right, you know what, no, Gio, it's time to tap into your sixth sense. You got to believe that it's there. You got to believe it's real. You even got to speak to that thing that you can't see as though it were there so that you can speak on it, speak life into it. And, and that's, yeah. that's, that's what faith is. Yeah, speak it into existence. So 51. And as he was now going down... Servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. So he's talking about the guy he just told to leave, right? To go tell him that his son lived. So Jesus did it anyway. All right. Um, then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So <laughs> it's almost like he's asking for verification. 
he was like, okay, cool. My son is healed. But exactly what hour did he – was he healed? Like, what hour did he start – what time was it that he started to feel better? All right. He's like – Exactly when did this happen? Like, when did he start feeling better? And it was like the seventh hour, he started, the fever left. So verse 53, so the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth, and himself believed in his whole house. So see, Jesus did it anyway, knowing that they only believed on the signs, miracles, and wonders. But this was done because Jesus knew that it would cause more souls to be saved. Right. Right. So this man told them what happened. Like, I went to Jesus. I told him to heal you. And exactly the time I told exactly the time he said that I had to leave because my son is healed is exactly the time that you were healed. And so now the whole house is one back unto Jesus. All right. Um, where are we? Uh, verse 54. So this is, again, the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. So what was the first miracle in Galilee? The Sherry, Sherry started singing the song. Water, you turned into wine. <laughs> yeah, he, he turned the water into wine. Yeah, I think Do you remember where he was? He was at, he was at, I think, was that a party or a wedding? I think that was a wedding. He was at the wedding, yeah. At a wedding, yep. That's probably that's probably the feast, bro. That he was talking about. Cause I'm looking at it now, in chapter two. What's that? I got it. Verse nine says, "When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that oh, was yeah, much wine, he knew not whence it was. Like, he didn't know where it came from." Right. Okay. I wonder if that's the feast that he's talking about. The Galileans attended. Probably. When he spoke about it in forty-eight. I mean, um, chapter four, verse forty-five. Yeah. So now you gotta put did you got sidebar? Did you get that? You said the two show the two festivals, right? Um, Passover. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, Passover. Um, what do you call it? What did I say? I said I think it's the feast of unleavened bread. That's so. What I see here, I guess that's the same thing. Feast of the festival of Passover and unleavened bread. I guess that's the same. That might be that might be the same, same. thing. Yeah. And then it's the festival of Pentecost. There you go. Also, and yeah. The festival of shelters. They probably, they probably just called the same thing two different names. I think that the second one you just said, I don't think it happened yet. Which one? The festival of shelters? Yeah, I never even heard of that one. Which one is that one? Mm -hmm. I ain't heard of that. I can't tell you off the top of the head. Yeah, the um, the Pentecost one didn't happen yet. So, cause we no. we to figure out what feast they were talking about, but it's, it might be, it might be this party that he's talking about, um, in chapter two. Back in two. Yeah. yeah. But so I I know it's like the feast of weeks. And that's seven Passovers. After seven Passover, after seven Passovers, I think it's the fiftieth week. That's the same thing as Pentecost, the festival of Pentecost. That might be right. Yeah. Fifty weeks yeah. might be the same thing at Pentecost. Yeah, it's also called the Festival of Harvest or the Feast of, of Festival of Weeks. Festival of Weeks. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's a separate entity. Um, yeah, that was a sidebar. Yeah, we, we'll talk about that later when we get to that point. Um, but yeah, that's that's chapter four for you, bro. Chapter was crazy. Yeah, that was that was heavy. That was heavy. Jesus, Jesus, stuff met, up with, uh, Jesus met up with the woman of Samaria. Started talking, started talking game to her. She was confused. She was like, "What is this man talking about?" The guy kept going. She she tried to switch the conversation, but Jesus kept doing his thing. And after she finally, finally got the message and understand what he was trying to say, and then went back to the village, spread the word, then came back. Jesus talked with them. Then Jesus went, and he went to uh, Judea and Galilee. 
the the nobleman came up to him and asked him to heal his son. I think at first Jesus like was hesitant about doing it because obviously he knew that like the man only believed him based on his work and not really too much by like faith and actually believing what God can do. But Jesus did it anyways because you know him performing that miracle would lead um that nobleman to talk to more people that he know and get more people involved in um Christ. And the dope thing, I know you're about to close out, but the dope thing about that ending with that man and, and his son being sick, um, Jesus never went to the house. Jesus n- never went to the house. And, 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 and this, is, this isn't even a chapter where it says um, uh, uh, Jesus just sends his word and, and the, the person was healed. This, this is, it ain't even that chapter. But um, even this, and in, 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 in this, in this chapter four, Jesus never went to the house. He just, he just spoke the word. Yo, I dare hear, to the house. I dare hear Jesus in the Caribbean accent telling like, "Go, <laughs> go, on, go!" And I, I don't know why I see, I hear him speaking like that, telling the man to get out his face, like, "Go." You, you pick me, you know, something crazy like that. How are you having yeah. <laughs> But that's that's <laughs> this is why I can't wear him. I can't. I'm telling you, yo, I, I need to start my own um major hype joint. Yeah, sure. How Americans perceive Caribbean people. <laughs> <laughs> no lie. Oh, um shout out to you, bro. I love that you were able to articulate what you learned um through the study, that you really understood it. And that that's the major thing, man. That, we're not just here talking, but you're actually understanding um, what's going on in the scriptures. So, you know, big ups to you. Shout out to you. So it's all about. Yeah, the next step is to start applying it now. Yeah. Now you're getting the understanding of it. The next step is to try to start applying it in the spiritual and in the physical. Absolutely. Father, we bless you and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this time that we are able to set aside to seek you in your word to seek wisdom knowledge and understanding that we thank you for the holy spirit that bore forth understanding and revelation we thank you god for the brother we pray that you will continue to have your way and we pray god as we have discussed as we have shared as we have discovered we pray now that by the power of your holy spirit you will help us to apply it in the name of jesus we pray we pray that you will continue to have your way I pray that there will be a continual thirst and hunger, not just for righteousness, but for your word and to continue to seek your face. We pray that you will bless everything that we're doing for everything that we do is to the honor and glory of your name. We pray, oh God, that you will continue to use Ezra and that your hand will continue to be upon him. We pray that you will seal him in the name of Jesus. I come against every plan of the enemy right now. We know the enemy is upset. Here is another young man that you are using. Father, you said in your, your word, young man, I write unto you because you're strong. Yes. And I pray, Father God, that you'll continue to uplift him. That you'll continue to pour into him and equip him and use him to make a difference. In the name of Jesus, we pray. So continue to have your way in and through our lives. Thank and let us be not just hearers of your word, but doers of your word as well. Yes. And just like this woman, I pray, Father God, that you will give us the courage, that you will give us the strength to say to our parents, to say to those that we're surrounded by, to say to our coworkers and our friends and our families, come and see a man. And we pray, Father God, that as we sow seeds, that you will bring forth the increase and that souls will be saved. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is the end of the video. We'll be back next week with John chapter 5. And uh, I pray that you keep on coming back every single week. Join us as we go along in this journey to dwell more in the Bible, to learn more about God, to build a better um, friendship and a better communication between all three of us. And we pray that you bring a, bring along a friend, tell, tell a friend to come watch this. If you don't have your Bible, that's okay. The scriptures will always be on the screen. So you can just watch along and read along with us. And just it could just be like you're with us, but not physically with us right now. Uh, that's it. Please like, subscribe, peace.